Now we will talk about schematic symbols. And I'll demonstrate this with an example. Suppose we have a light bulb and a battery and we're going to connect them with some wires like this. Well now we have a circuit and a lot of times we need a diagram of the circuit and circuit, circuits can get very large and complicated and the diagrams can get extremely complicated and to make the diagrams manageable electricians and engineers often draw circuits or almost always draw circuits using special symbols for the different components in the circuits so instead of drawing this an electrical engineer would draw something like this this set of uh, a long thin line next to a little short line that's a battery each pair here would be a cell of the battery and typically the long thin line is the positive side and the the little short little short one is the negative side and then the wires coming out would be straight lines like this so in reality the wires bend all around but in the diagrams they're always drawn straight so we'll put a V here for the voltage source next to the battery and let's run the wires up here and the bulb would look like this this little loop there inside represents the filament and then this wire coming back down. So that's a schematic diagram that is electrically equivalent to the circuit. And I'll put a, a R here to represent some resistance that the bulb might have. And we also might have a switch in the circuit. I'll put um, a break in the wire here and draw this. So imagine this little section right here being able to flip over into this position so the current can flow. Right now the switch is open and the current doesn't flow and that would correspond to a little device that we could put over here, an actual device in the circuit. Something like this, maybe a little toggle switch here and this piece up top could flip back and forth. An actual switch. And so you see that each each thing in the actual circuit has a corresponding schematic symbol. So there's a battery, a light bulb, a switch, and instead of a light bulb up here, we might have just a resistor, and a resistor would look like this, a zigzag line, and that would just have electrical resistance. And it's not uncommon to have a resistor and a light bulb together, something like this. I'll put a a resistor down here and it's very common to use a resistor I'll move my R over there next to that it's it's very common to use a resistor to uh, limit the flow of current from one part of in, in one part of a circuit this bulb might only be able to take so much electric current and so the resistance the resistor causes the circuit to have higher resistance to limit the current flow so there's a, a simple circuit diagram drawn with schematic symbols. And all the little things that can go into a circuit have a little symbol. And you can see that the diagrams can be kept neat by keeping the lines straight and at right angles. And all of the symbols here that we've gone over, you should know for this class. You should know the, the schematic symbol for a light bulb, for a switch, for a battery, for a resistor and you should also know the schematic symbol for a capacitor here's a wire the capacitor is just two parallel lines like that that don't touch that's a capacitor and we'll see those later on in the course and just to look at an example here's a much larger and more complicated electric circuit this is an amplifier this is a circuit that will take an electric electrical signal and amplify it and one of the key pieces you see here on the right is the speaker and this is just one example there are millions of different possible circuits that could that could be built and they can get a lot bigger and more complicated than this one and if you were to study uh, electrical engineering for example you would become very very familiar with diagrams such as this